it's an honor to be here. And uh, most of you I've never met before, but I do know John Gall. And if Edith is on, I, I didn't see a list of everyone that was on, but um, those of you who I have met before, it's good to, to see you again. And, and uh, I look forward to our conversation. So uh, the title of the talk is Amplifying the Voice of Social Work in Policy. Speak in the civic engagement or civic volunteerism model. So, this is what we'll cover today. We're going to talk about the big idea behind SPEAK, and I should say SPEAK stands for Social Policy, Education, Advocacy, and Knowledge. It's, it's not a center, it's not a program, it's just SPEAK. So sometimes it's hard, it's hard to remember that, but we'll speak about speak and what the big idea is. Then we'll talk about what it is doing and what it has done, what the theory is behind it, how the theory is operationalized, initial, very preliminary data analysis and implications, and then uh, assuming there's time, what are the long-term impacts that we uh, are striving for? So what's the big idea behind SPEAK? Why do, why do we have it? Well, in the United States, as it may be true in other countries, we are having trouble with uh, democracy. And so one of the things that we know is that democracy requires large scale participation by wide numbers of people. Uh, and we, we're having trouble making sure that even the most basic aspect of of democracy voting, we're having trouble making sure that everyone can do that. But that's one of our goals. And of course, we all know that civic engagement is, voting is part of that, but there's many other things. So SPEAK is designed to increase levels of civic engagement among social workers and their allies. Let me give you a short, very short history of SPEAK because we just started in February of this year. So I can't go on for a very long time, but I wanna, I wanna make sure that uh, I give credit where credit is due. The Simmons Sisters Fund at the Texas Women's Foundation is the donor of all the funding that we've uh, received. And so thanks to their generosity, um, we, we are able to exist. Um, it's kind of a sad story. Actually, uh, I, I knew one of the Simmons sisters. She was a, a social work student in one of my classes. And it, it turned out that her father was very wealthy. And uh, when he passed away, she became wealthy. And she turned that wealth, in, along with her sister, into a foundation for the Simmons Sisters Fund. And so we were in talks about creating something like Speak. Uh, when unfortunately the cancer that she had came back and she died before we could get started. So I just want to uh, have a shout out to uh, Serena Simmons Conley, who passed away before seeing any of this happen. But we have some accomplishments. We had uh, just a, a couple weeks ago, we held a, a big launch for the voting and social work. Um, campaign that's being put together partially by Speak and partially by macro practice uh, organizations. And the goal is to help preserve democracy through increasing voting. Other accomplishments are we, we've hosted two students for their field placements and we're actually paying them. Uh, those of you who aren't in the US may not realize that most of the internships that our students take are unpaid which just is a terrible thing, in my opinion. So we're also hiring students as research assistants. Again, since we just started in February, uh, we don't have a lot uh, of, of things that they've done completed. But. And here we are, uh, me on the left, and uh, the two staff members who really are the day-to-day -day people who, who run things, we're getting uh, deputized as voting registrars, so we can uh, go out and, and help people register. And this is what we just did last week, was this first annual Speak Symposium. Uh, I, I know at least a few of you uh, got to see some of it, and uh, many of you may have registered. We had over 320 registrants, 
which was amazing to us. We had over a dozen top academics, Mimi Abramovitz, if you know her, Harry Mizrahi, other people up and coming. So uh, those, those are our accomplishments so far. Uh, let's look now at the theory behind speak. And I won't go into this in, in detail because I think we're probably very familiar with it, all of us on this uh, chat. But there's three primary variables that go into the reasons that people are politically active. You have resources, you have political engagement or psychological engagement, and you have networks. And so uh, what we've done at Speak is uh, we, we wanted to get a baseline survey of students at my university. And so that's what the data is going to, I'm going to show you some data from that. But of course, it's always interesting. How, how do you take these particular variables and operationalize them? Uh, I know many of you have probably uh, done some work on the civic uh, volunteerism model. Uh, and so you've had to, to deal with this before as well. Many people use the same set of questions. And so in our survey, we tried to do that as well. We tried to get some uh, common questions that other people have used so that we, in the future, we can do some uh, comparison. And I know Toby, you and Jason Ostrander uh, published a, an article not too long ago about uh, Swiss and US uh, social work students, if I'm right, but maybe it's a social worker. So that's the kind of comparative work I think is fascinating. And John, you've done a lot of, you and Edith have done a lot of work. Um, I think I saw Talia was here too. Anyway, hi Talia. Um, so here are some of the baseline survey results. I wanna to talk to you about how this has been operationalized. So political action in our survey is, uh, there are two different variables. There are 12 political actions that we asked about, um, and it ranged from zero to 12. Once you, once you add the scores from all of those up, and then we had a mean of four and a half, basically. And then there was another dependent variable, which we take out the voting, because everybody says that they vote. So you don't get much variation there. So anyway, political action is basically defined as the sum of a lot of different potential actions. So then we have resources. Well, resources turns out to be uh, money, time, and skills. So in terms of money, this is how the, um, I, I hope you can see this. If not, get the slides and uh, we can blow them up. Um, but we asked if they were low income, lower middle income, middle income, upper middle income, or high income. And uh, given that these were all social work students, we were a little surprised at the pretty even distribution of, of the, uh, all five levels, including high income at uh, 18, no, at uh, 16%. So that's, that's good that we're getting a range of income in, in our school. So that's the money, you gotta measure money. Uh, time, so we ask questions about, you know, do you do this? And one time we asked it, it was yes or no. And another time we asked it, it was rarely, never, rarely, sometimes. And so you, you have a better spread there with using an ordinal skill, uh, scale instead of a dichotomous. And so if they said never or rarely, we ask if they didn't do it because of a lack of time. And so uh, I'm trying not to get too deep into the weeds here because it's not that interesting. But this is how we got the variable. It has a mean of 2.66 when it could range from zero to four. And then skills, very similar uh, in terms of the process of getting this variable. And engagement. Um, engagement uh, is a tricky thing, you know, psychological engagement. So we asked these questions about whether they consider themselves to be well qualified to participate, if they could do a good job, if they feel prepared. And so again, we made a, a scale out of these individual items. Uh, could be from three to 15 and the mean is nine. So that's, you know, somewhere in the middle. It, it, we, we, so, I, you know, that's, that's actually not too bad. But we also had a set of questions that were kind of like negative self-efficacy, like 
Well, it wouldn't do me any good to be involved because people like me don't have any say about what the government does. And so we combined these, these items and turned it into a scale with a mean of eight and a, and a half. So anyway, if, it's, if you have positive self-efficacy, it's gonna make you want to be more likely to get involved. If you have this negative self-efficacy, it's be more likely that you are not going to be involved. And then the final uh, big net, uh, area is uh, network or connections. And so we ask if they are active in political organizations or active in non-political organizations. Uh, these two are highly correlated. Well, they're significantly correlated. Um, so I just chose to put one into the final analysis. All right, so I did a quick regression analysis at about the two o'clock my time in the morning. Uh, Toby got several emails from me. So he, he knows this is, I mean, it was nine o'clock your time, but um, anyway, the, 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 um, the regression analysis is promising. All right, again, this is still preliminary, but of the, uh, we had an R square of 0 0.33, um, significant level of 0 0.000. And only two variables, explain that uh, those results. One is time, very highly, uh, if, if you have less time, you're less involved. And engagement, if you have positive self-efficacy, you're very likely to be involved. And these other variables, the, the income level did not come off as significantly predictive, the skills not predictive, and participation in policy-related groups, again, not seemingly important. So the big results, believe in yourself. <laughs> the positive self-efficacy is important for more involvement. And results, the lack of time is a powerful deterrent to participation for students. Now to this point, nothing surprising, right? I mean, we already know this, people have used this uh, approach this model and found this exact same thing. And so it's kind of like, well, why, why do it again? Why do another survey? And um, so we have these two implications. Time is the largest barrier for people who are students. And so we ask, well, how, how do we get more time? How do they get more time? How do any of us get more time? So one of the things that we're doing is, uh, well, if you had stronger time management, and, and you could stay off of Facebook or you could stay off of social me media. That would give you hours more time, a week anyway. Uh, also, if you had scholarships or jobs, you know, paid internships, you would have more time because you wouldn't have to have a second job or you wouldn't have to worry about paying off the student loans when you graduate. So those are kind of more meso things. And then there are structural issues in the United States, lack of government funding, the increasing uh, cost of tuition. Uh, many of you don't have these issues necessarily in your country because the university is not paid out of the pockets of the students. Another implication, students who think they're good enough, that is they have positive self-efficacy, they do engage in political action more often. So again, we have uh, and one, one more implication is that maybe we need to expand the civic volunteerism model uh, and add things like gender and race and ethnicity, which I, I have the data, but I haven't tested for. I think uh, there's a lot of identity issues that we haven't really drilled down very much with in terms of how this model operates. All right, so uh, again, um, this is... This is all very like cross-sectional and, and we know it and uh, so what? I mean, th this is nothing new so far. And this research is all very static in a way. Um, most of the surveys I've seen, they do it once and then they, that's it. And then you read another article and they did it once. So the insight that I wanna bring to you here is that what would happen if we could use the, the civic volunteerism model as an intervention? other than just a description. What would happen if we said, 
well, if these are the variables that are important, what can we do to shift that and, and try to make a difference in civic engagement by targeting those things? So if, if you know of other people who have done this as a, you know, uh, intervention, I would love to learn more about it. So we, we think SPEAK is a set of actions to increase civic engagement by helping students with funding, jobs, trainings, events, um, and really important to get them into a network where they maybe haven't been involved before. Does it work? Well, we don't know yet. If we get funding for year two, we'll be able to, to redo the survey and and compare it after a year. And we're, we're actually hoping for three years of funding so we have, have a better sense of, of change over time. So uh, I was trying to, to be brief and to uh, leave time for questions. So that's the end of my prepared remarks. And uh, thank you very much for allowing me to present to you.